All right, we're ready. Let's go. All right, welcome to another episode of the Crawl USA podcast. I'm Scott. Uh, I'm Jason. You might be thinking that this studio looks kind of thrown together and homemade. But Strangely. You would, but you would be correct. You're absolutely correct. But here we are, going into uh, another episode. And today, we are going to talk about the evolution of our Jeeps, right? Um, some different things that we've done. Um, maybe what we do different. Why we do it different. Would we do anything different? Um, some different things like that. Uh, so, let's just start with... Uh, some of the basics. How did you get into the Jeep first, I guess? The Jeeping world, if uh, you will. I, I actually owned a Jeep that uh, I never did anything with. I, it was a daily driver, commuter. You know, I think went camping one time. Went out to check out a piece of land in the mountains near Grants one time. Might have put it in four-wheel drive then. But... Um, yeah, so when I got the, uh, the one I have now, I thought I was really going to get into camping, right? And uh, <clears throat> it was a close call. You know, I was real close to being one of those uh, rooftop tent guys, driving around with all my camping stuff every day, ready to camp on a moment's notice, right? Any Anywhere, parking lot at Home Depot. I was ready. Didn't matter. Uh, but it didn't go that way um, because early on I um, went out with a group and did um, what at the time I thought was, you know, some, some rock crawling, climbed up some, some really insignificant stuff. But man, that, that struggle and the, that little bit of um, stress, I was hooked. So... Luckily, I mean, not, not in terms of my finances, but <laughs> luckily I didn't, I didn't go the, uh, uh, the overlanding route. My family hated camping, so. Pretty easy to get out of that. Pretty easy to get out of that one. And um, yeah, and then eventually the build got to where, you know, I have to trailer it, so. Because I'm not one of those cool kids that can build a, a rock crawler that can go 80 miles an hour down the freeway. I'm not that talented, so. <laughs> so, okay, so, um, and you were thinking about rooftop tempting and uh, going down that path. Um, so you went out with someone, some people started getting into it. Um, so I guess that's a good question to start with. From your days of overlanding, to getting into, no, it is, sorry, uh, getting into rock crawling. Was there a big change initially from what you did to your Jeep in that first stage? No, uh, because, you know, the first thing I did when I got it, I, I put a winch on it, put a, a small lift, and bigger tires on it, All right? So... At that point, that first point was just figuring out what I could do and getting um, <clears throat> getting the nerve, right? Getting, well, getting some seat time and, you know, not feeling scared to death on every little thing, right? I mean... What was, was your first size tires? 35s? 35s. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with a two and a half inch lift. Okay, so then... So you're out there doing that with some people, and then in what what year would you say that is about? Twenty eighteen. Okay, so then about a year later, you're talking to some guy on the internet and tells you about Chili Challenge. Yeah. And you go down there. Yeah, that's really the start. And that's twenty nineteen, right? Twenty nineteen. Okay. Did, did the Chili Challenge? What changed? Uh, did, was there much change from 2018 to 2019 with your Jeep? No. No? Okay. All right. So it went to Chili Challenge in 2019 on 35s. Yep. Okay. 
All right, so that's pretty interesting. I don't know if I really realized that. Uh, do you remember what trails you ran in 2019? I do. Um, Green Canyon, um, Apache Canyon. All right, I lied, I don't remember. I remember those two. Okay. Um, do you remember kind of the ratings on them? They were moderate. Fours, fives? Six. Six? On 35s, okay. So So the that boulder garden in Green Canyon, I mean, it's different every year because of the rain, but um, that was a real challenge, right? And, you know, I've got this type A thing where I have to be early. I don't like being late, for, especially if it's unknown stuff. So I was right behind the trail boss. Remember who your trail boss was? Mike Malakowski. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, cool. So, right person to be behind, probably for your well first great, venture into it. Great first experience, man. Yeah, because you know he's super cool, super patient, uh, very experienced. Knows the area well. Yeah. So, um, that was kind of terrifying at the time, and um, yeah, so. A lot of the rigs that were out there, in fact, I think I, I think I may have been, other than Mike and Kayla, I was probably the only person that didn't have hydro assist, which um, seemed to befuddling to all the other guys on the trail. And um, anyway, it just you know it was uh, it was a, a real game changer, right? That that really started it all for me. Do you remember at that time where you? Concerned with, I mean, I think we're always concerned with breakage, but scratching or anything like that? Like minor, not not breakage, but no. scratches, dents. We, I mean, we, I've done enough stuff down around Socorro where, you know, there's so much brush, you're, you're going to get pinstriping and stuff. Um, um, Lost Boys was another one of the trails that I did that first year. And that was... Definitely uh, pushing it, you know. I, I, w I didn't know if I'd get through it, some of those parts. Okay, so 2019 did Chili Challenge. Um, and I, that's where we, you really started getting into it. What was the next evolution from the small lift, 35s, winch, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, right? Still had a, a theme going on at that time, um, right? What was your change after that? I moved my shocks, my rear shocks up onto the axle so they weren't hanging down below the axle. Um, I went up the tire size. Same and lift or did you get a different lift to do that? I did, I did another lift. And that one I did myself. First one you had paid for, paid for someone to do. The first one I, I had somebody do it. Four wheel parts or, uh -huh. yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. So that's a change, right? You're starting to. Well, you know, and not to, um, you know, tell tales out of school, but I, I went over there for a, an alignment, a four wheel, an off-road alignment, and I got it back and my rear coil springs were not in their seats. They were just like hanging out. Mm. So, you know, at that point, I thought, you know, and it's getting work done is expensive. Any, anybody who's done that knows. And so that's, that was a, another pivotal moment. That's when I started doing my own work. Right. The, the cost of that, you could buy more parts, right? Yeah. If we can figure out how to get them on. Yeah. That, at least that was my story. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So new lift that you put in, bigger tires. Um, what after that? Then what happened? Hydro assist. Hydro assist. And did you start with the PSC? No, I started with the redneck ram. Oh, you did have a redneck ram. Mm -hmm. hmm, okay. Right. Okay. So start going from there. And then I think after that, right at that point, we were wheeling together, getting into harder stuff, going with more people. Um, right, that was what five years ago, but we've done a lot in the last four years. 
um, and trying to do more every year, right? And now it's kind of snowballed, right? We're getting into a lot more technical, harder trails. Um, Jeeps have gone up in, in builds, right? Now, you know, just a quick rundown of where you're at with your Jeep and what's done to it and what you're currently working on right now. Um, so after we met and, um, we were, we were wheeling a lot, like a couple times a month, you know, so 20, we met in, at the end of 19, so 20, 21, 22, we're, we're going out every month where we live, we can wheel year round. So 12 months out of the year, we're doing at least two yeah, at least. wheeling trips a, a month. We started traveling to other places. This is the longest downtime we've ever had. Yeah, Mason, uh, Utah, Colorado. Um, and when we before we went up to Montrose the first time, that's when I, I went with stickies. I got the, the, oh, the reds. G reds, yeah. ran those for a while. But they didn't, uh, the sidewalls weren't tough enough for the rocks down here in New Mexico. Um, so I'd, I'd had, you know, like chromoly shafts and, um, um, you know, uh, G2 axles. The, the, yeah, the steering brace. Well, that G2 axle was, that was just a housing because I bent my other housing, my stock Dana 44. Um, but, uh, we four linked the rear, moved the gas tank, um, put the Dana 60s in, the Fusion Dana 60s. Um, and so that's still the case, right? Still a rear four link, double triangulator four link. Went to a bigger ram and pump and everything went, went with to PSC. A big, bigger steering box and the PSC setup. Right. And, um, for the four link, I got the uh, the motor built um, four link kit. So new cross members, skid plate, and brackets. So I just had to build the links and build the bracketry for the for the rear. Um, had to learn how to do brake lines. Um, had to do a new uh, brake master cylinder for the big brakes. And now we're doing the front of that. Oh, put ORI struts on. Right, went, right. went away from conventional yeah, so, shocks and coils. Uh, that's been a couple years with the, the rear four link and the ORIs, and that's just been fantastic. So much better. So now we're doing the front with the ORIs. That's what we're in the process of doing now. And um, quite challenging because a lot of uh, trial and error and uh, modifying. We got some off the shelf um, builder parts. And um, even those are being completely, not completely, but big part of it's being modified just to fit and to fit the room where we need them to fit. Yeah. Right. So getting ready to do the full hydro on it as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, with the PSC kit. So that should be great. Um, so you're to this point, right? You've learned a lot, uh, driven it a lot with, uh, the different setups. Uh, but if you could go back and start over or start over even now, um, you know, I guess let's attack the first one. Would you do it differently? Knowing what I know now, uh, for sure. What are some of the things you would do different? Yeah. You know, there's tons of stuff that I bought that I got rid of, right? You know, ended up, um, <clears throat> luckily, you know, selling a lot of it. Um, but, um, yeah, I would have started big. Started big, okay. You know, and it's hard to say, like, you know, now, I mean, we've um, built a junkyard axle. All right, so if I could rewind two years, I might not have purchased built axles. Built axles. 
Right. But the trade off there was, you know, like we said, we were wheeling two, three times a month. So the learning curve on doing um, junkyard axles for the first time, we would have been down for, you know, who knows long. Yeah. Long, yeah. Right. Um, but, you know, now we, we've done it and I'd probably go that route. Okay. So on that, right, this is a question that I've thought about a lot, right? So if you could start over and build bigger sooner, quicker, how do you think, how do you think that would impact your driving skills at this point? That's a great uh, question, right? Because there was a lot of learning that happened. For example, doing those harder trails with no hydro assist, right? learned a lot right because you had to be able to get up over and around things um, with big tires and no no hydro assist so that was that was good I don't you know I don't know if I'd want to trade that I mean you know if you go straight into a, a red dot buggy right you're still gonna have problems learning but um, you're not gonna probably learn all the technical stuff that you learn being small small underpowered right without the I think I think another point on that with that is really right the other things that we've learned right not just the skill of driving but some of the skills of repairs right mm -hmm. you know if, if I would think if you don't know how to drive a buggy and you just put in one and you go at it I'm just I mean, they break anyways, but I'm sure if you don't know what you're doing, it breaks, you can break it as well, right? And yeah, and it's probably easier to get yourself into situations that uh, get a lot tougher, in, right? Right. And, and you, you see that sometimes, right? You see. But I think the skill of, of, of learning how to get ourselves out, right? Like, I'm, I think there's a couple things I'm worried about that break that we are going to have real problems with depending on where we're at and what obstacle we're in. Like if a transmission goes out, that's going to be a one that I don't know what we can do versus just dragging it as best as we can. Right. But I feel like short of that and some major engine problems, we can probably attack it and get it taken care of at this point. Right. Like I, I don't know that there's too much. I mean, look, we'll get it going enough to get us out of there, you know, but not, you know, it's not, we'll have to get it repaired correctly. But, you know, on some of those things, I think, I think I feel pretty safe out there in that fact because of where we started having to break, learn things, learning how things work, right, and seeing these different things. So, you know, to me, I think that's a pretty big advantage of kind of starting small and building up, you know, but, you know, to the other point of that is, man, the money that we spent on crap that we don't even have anymore, Right, like that's that's pretty outrageous. Probably, I don't like to look at the or think about what that number is. But if you bought some of that stuff from me, thank you, and you're listening, thank you very much. <laughs> I hope it's doing great for you. Yeah, I hope you're having as much fun as, with it as we did. So it helps me perpetuate the story and the cycle with, with my wife. That oh, don't worry, I sold parts to get these. <laughs> Uh, all right, so when we get done with this next step here, uh, for linking the front, the ORIs, the full hydro, is there a next evolution of your Jeep? Maybe. What would that be? Oh, um, short of, let's say, let's say keeping it mostly a stock Jeep. Well, it hasn't been. <laughs> It's well, I mean, forever, right? uh, stock body. If you, you know, we, we also forgot about eliminating the top, putting in welded uh, roll cages on both of them. Um, I cut my B pillars off, went to half doors, trail doors. Um, so, that, yeah, there's really no going back. Right, but short of a juggy, is there anything else? What's after this? After this, um, I'd like the ability to um, separate the drivetrain, Ooh. right? And just use the front axle. That would be pretty cool. Um, and if I don't tube out the back and go juggy, um, then I'll probably have to 
look at a V8. You know, because it's just so big. It's freaking huge, man. Yeah. Um, For those of you who don't know, I, I have a JKU, and it's it's a boat. Yeah, on 60s and 42s, I mean. Taking everything off of it and out of it that I possibly can, but it's still massive. Uh, will your Jeep ever be done? I don't know. How, how can it be? Right? I mean, I don't it, know. it I can mean, be mostly done, right? But, um, I mean, there, there's, there's always another direction to go in, right? I mean, I've, um, that, that, uh, that dude that has dimension off-road, is a very uh, talented uh, fabricator. Like he's built a rear steer JKU. That's that kind of stuff. Is. What point do we call it and just get buggies? Right, like Jeremy. Right, that's. I yeah, mean, I, I I think if I get to the point where um, I think I'm a, a good enough driver, you know, then I would do it. But for now, you know, it's like well, it's like a it's like a cheat code. You know, um, yeah, he got a buggy, but he also. He's been doing it for so long, and he could drive the shit out of a Jeep, modified or not. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And, um, you know, so if you've got that kind of experience and skill, um, then yeah, maybe. Okay. But for now, I like the, I like the challenge. I like the, that it's not so easy. Not to say that, um, you know, because obviously the guys we know that uh, that are um, running buggies, they are doing way harder stuff, right? They're doing some of the most extreme stuff we have around here, and it's it's extreme. Um, so I'm not saying that's easy, but um, I'm still learning. So I think this is helping me with that. Okay. Good. What else? Anything else to add? Well, let's talk about your build. Oh, my build. Uh, What's the last thing you did to yours? It's a pretty significant. Yeah. So we back halved, uh, back halved it with the motor built kit, uh, built a junkyard, Sterling ten and a half, um, geared it, built it. Uh, put it in and uh, put ORIs in the rear and stretched it eight inches eight inches so and put the fuel cell in the, in the tub yeah I got rid of the gen right tank in the back and put the fuel cell in the back um, and for me that was a pretty significant change like it really helped uh, the stability of my Jeep making it longer um, right I'm about 109 now um, a little wider in the rear too. A little wider, yeah, yeah. No, um, so that really helped. That really made a big difference uh, for me because that's been a challenge for my Jeep being not quite as long, um, especially going with you. You know, it's it's different, right? We we perform differently on the obstacles depending on what they are, but um, you know, the stability of it was the biggest thing, and the strength of that axle. I don't really have to worry now um, because I've been very hard on all my axles because I've ran really small axles for the longest time. Um, but now being on tons, uh, you know, that's given me some confidence to try some more things and, you know, give it a little bit more purse, if you will, right? Because uh, now I'm not scared of breaking an axle shaft or a, a U-joint or something like that. But, you know, just move the problem somewhere else um, but we'll see but uh, it's it's been very good so I've been very happy with that um, you know I think if you know well, well obviously we're building the front of yours we're gonna do similar to mine um, coming up sometime um, you know four link the front long arm it 
uh, and hydro full hydro on it with the PSC kit. So that'll be pretty significant getting my front tires moved forward a little bit too. Um, I like to run a big bumper. If you guys haven't seen it, I like the bumper that sticks out with the stinger. Uh, <laughs> so it hits a lot of things before my tires do. Um, I'd like to keep that bumper for some reasons, but bringing my tires out might help some of that. So when we do the front on yours, are you going to front half it? Oh, man. I don't know. I've been thinking about it. It's getting that motor belt kit. Yeah. Just front halving it and being done with it, do it right once. Instead of thinking about doing it later. And then get those get those front tires out there. Yeah. Don't have to worry about it. So yeah. Um we've already cut your frame in half once. Yeah. Yeah, that's the craziest thing when you do the front and half, you have just the part under your seats that are the original. Um <laughs> Yeah, so that'll be my next evolution. Um, you know, I think for me, I've been thinking about this a lot. That might be it. I don't know if the rear steer's well, in my future. Well, you already have. Yeah, and I'm, the I Atlas. have some different things, right? I have the Atlas, um, which is nice. So I can do front digs. Um, you know, I don't think I want to be any taller um, from tire size. So I'm pretty happy with, with my 40s. Um, you know, so I think, you know, I don't know. I say that now, but we'll see, right? Such a few rear steer years. I mean, no, but I don't know. That's how like, can I not at that point, right? But I mean, you know, that seems really crazy to me. But, yeah, but it seems crazy cutting the front of that frame off now too. Right, but let's you just know, get a buggy. Let's just be done um, with this nonsense. It'd be a lot cheaper. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. a lot cheaper. Yeah, like it'd be it'd be way better just to buy a buggy from the beginning. At this point, though, would you buy it or would you build it? Probably build it. Yeah. Right. Like, although it's still cheaper just to buy one, cut some things off, and do what I want to it. But I don't know. It's kind of like buying a drum set. You just wait for some dude to get married, and next thing you know. There's a drum, drum set for sale. 30 piece? Could be. Yeah. There's a buggy for sale. Get that thing out of the yard. I mean, they're cheap. Comparatively, yeah. Yeah, comparatively. I mean, I know they're I mean, a lot some, of money. Some but... of them are. Yeah, and I wonder how much work we'd have to do, you know, on a cheap one versus a double the price one. So, um, but yeah, you know, I think, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is really the skills that I've learned in, in the process of building bigger. Um, you know, starting with small tires, right? I ran Chili Challenge, like I'm gonna sound like one of those old guys, but I ran it one year on 33s, right? And I man, I couldn't tell you what I ran. It wasn't real hard, but I think Roco Tio though. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, but I ran it in 33s, right? I had to get pulled over some things. I just couldn't make it over it. But, um, you know, that really helped. Um, you know, not having the hydro assist really, I don't know that, it, for me, I don't know that it helped me learn any better, but I've really, for me, learned the value of the hydro assist because I would get stuck in positions where I couldn't get my tires turned to get over or off of something. Um, so for that, that made a huge difference to me because um, I was running... 37s without it and couldn't turn at all you know i'd get up on an obstacle and they're like driver driver and i'm i i understand i understand those words coming out of your mouth but yeah. there's nothing i can do i'm trying my best <laughs> yeah um my back. you know and, and and we will slow really slow we crawl right and it's very hard to turn when you're crawling you gotta without hydro assist right you gotta be moving a little bit to help those tires turn, um, you know, and I'd get up on an obstacle and then be at the point where if I went any further, I'm going to go off the wrong side of it. So, you know, that was, that was important for me, but I don't think it helped me. I didn't learn anything from my experiences. I don't believe on the steering part of it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so, you know, I think that's where I'm at with mine.
And the reason I'm doing full hydro is for strength and to get, get some better, more turning radius, get right? Better turning radius. Yeah. Because even you know with a good hydro assist, there's stuff that breaks. You know now there's other stuff that breaks because of that extra pressure. Right. So. All right. Anything else? I don't think so. No. All right. Uh, well, if you guys want to comment on, hey, if you think we made a bad decision on some of our moves, let us know. Um, if you can relate, let us know. Um, if you want to put what some of the things you're doing or upcoming, uh, put that in the comments. That's great. Uh, we've seen some comments on some of the other videos, and they've been great. One of them was the trail ratings. Um, you know, one of them... Richard asked, uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see again on, on Trail Hero when we think about it now um, with their ratings and who we go out with. Uh, so that'll be good. Um, so the comments are great. It gives us more things to look at. It, uh, you know, we're happy with the engagement that you guys are doing. Uh, so we appreciate all that and you know, let us know. All right. We'll see you out there. You guys have a great day. See you on the trails.